rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to Masjid Talks. Uh, Insha'Allah, uh, we have uh, an, an amazing conversation uh, waiting for you, as many of you are more than well aware uh, of what's going on in the country, um, obviously, especially in Washington. Um, so there were, there were a lot of requests to talk about the situation uh, from an Islamic perspective, uh, also to discuss yeah, with people of knowledge, uh, people who, uh, who understand what's going on, people who uh, have been in the field of politics and people who are, uh, you know, they, they are working for change. Um, it would be an, a very interesting um, uh, perspective uh, if we could gain from people who, who were talking about this for a very long time, that uh, this, uh, what is taking place in the U.S. or, or you know, or in the world uh, is not sustainable. This is not something that uh, the world can uh, continue living under or even, uh, it's just not sustainable. Uh, so now we are kind of seeing a step-by-step -step, um, collapse almost of what we observed in uh, USSR. Uh, so inshallah, you know, the, that was one of the only things that we could actually think of in the modern times, uh, you know, to see that what happened with Soviet Union, uh, to bring some an expert, someone who knows uh, what it meant to live under Soviet Union, uh, what it meant to be, you know, uh, who somebody who saw the step, step, step by step collapse of Soviet Union. Uh, so inshallah, we're gonna have a good conversation. Uh, and then uh, a perspective from Islam that how do we look as Muslims? Uh, are we supposed to look at these, uh, you know, uh, world events, and uh, our role as Muslims in these events, inshallah? Uh, but before we go live and invite Dr. Abu Talha, uh, who was here uh, in the last conference when Islamic Oasis did the conference, today we are completely talking on uh, uh, Masjid Talks, inshallah. I am speaking as a political scientist and that is what my background is. And Dr. Abu Talha, as you know from the previous uh, events, uh, professor, teacher, scholar, um, a PhD from University of Chicago, uh, an author, uh, a well-rounded person, uh, not only has spoken many, probably a million times in the US, uh, speaks overseas in the Muslim world and has lived and graduated actually was lived in Russia. So. Before we get him on, uh, brothers, can we make sure that we are on Facebook Live? Abu Talha, are you? Uh, or uh, we're just waiting just to make sure that happens. Uh, I am ready, brother. I'm okay, ready. you're ready. Uh, how about us? No? It's there. I just need to figure this out. We are, we are. We're good. It's good. It's, it's good. Yes, yes, I need to figure this out here. Okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum, Butalha. How are you doing? Alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. Alhamdulillah. Good. Allah Rabbil Alameen. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you're smiling on the other side of the screen over there. Uh, it's almost uh, <laughs> a conversation too late <laughs> in many ways. Uh, you know, uh, so so, what's running through your mind as we uh, as we see the events taking place in Washington? Well, what's running in my mind are uh, really Trump's uh, words in uh, in the one in the million uh, uh, rally in front of the White House uh, day before yesterday, where he said. Uh, we either, so uh, he's really, really, I think he means it. Uh, he means you, 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 I don't know, I couldn't hear you. You broke up a little bit. You can say that again. Okay. What uh, Trump is actually saying is uh, either my way or the, or no way, which means, uh, in fact, he, he said there will not be a country uh, and what we have seen the two nights ago is not the end of it. That's the beginning of a big of big events in the United States. There is the uh, the divide that had been happening for the last uh, few decades, the digital divide, the race divide, the gender divide, the uh, rich poor divide. Today it's the America divide. That's uh, whether they like it or not. You cannot, you can, once you start dividing 
things. You cannot stop at any place. This will continue uh, uh, until the whole thing gets divided and broken. Uh, you know, and I, heard, uh, uh, I heard an inter interesting piece uh, uh, today on NPR here. With, with, you, know, you know NPR is one of the major uh, radio programs. Uh, and they were saying that even uh, after the, it seems like the Congress, when they decided to come together after the whole event happened, even in that meetings, it seems like the senators or the you know the, the, the both houses, uh, they were they were they, there could have been actually punches thrown at each other from the Republicans and the de Democrats. That's how furious it got even in the chamber. Even though the protesters were kicked out, they were removed from the from the building or whatever. Meaning, when you're talking about the divide. That's but what's the divide about Talha? When we talk about the divide, I mean, is the the divide is regarding what? Well, the divide. Uh, there are many divides that happen in societies that uh, distinguish uh, people uh, based on a certain criteria. That's what the divide is, where you have two parties or two groups on two different sides. Uh, America had created so many divides inside America and outside America. The biggest and foremost divide is the one that's based on color. So if you are black, I am white, we are different. Uh, if we are different, then we have different obligations, different responsibilities, different rights, different privileges, different lifestyles, different uh, uh, jurisdiction, uh, uh, things like people who go to the court, if you are black, you go to jail three times as much as uh, a white one. Uh, the divide distinguish people based on who has and who doesn't have, based on money. Uh, if you are poor, you belong to the gutters, you belong to the, to the street, to the homeless. Uh, if you are rich, you belong to the palaces and to the villas and to the uh, uh, luxurious life. So there is a divide and this, has been systematic within within the, within the capitalism and democracy. This has been systematic all the way through. Now today, they have yet one more divide happening, which is the divide of what is called the supremacist, who think that the country had been robbed, people, the immigrants, uh, the uh, different. Uh, uh, different classes, if you will, have been able to be part of the government. And therefore there is a divide, the political divide within the, within the country. And this political divide, uh, which is represented with what's called the deep state, the uh, surface state, the uh, lobbyist groups, the rich and the poor. So that type of divide now has come to the core of what is called democracy that's going to break the essence of democratic life and the, what's called the democracy, the uh, split between authorities, the peaceful transition of power, the, uh, the vote uh, the, uh, that makes, that decides who is going to run the government and who is going to do what. So the divide has come to this place, to this very core and the attack on the on the on the Capitol building, which is the the so called the prime symbol of it's, liberty, it's a, it's a sacred building, it's sacred. Uh, it's a holy site. It's it's this is the god of democracy, yeah, the god man. of democracy. So so there is an attack on this god. It's just like the Arabs who used to uh, create gods, and at some point of time they go and destroy it with their own hands and eat it up. So this is it has the, the time has come for the uh, nomad Americans. They they used to call them the nomad Arabs. So there is the the nomad Americans. The time has come to eat up their own god and destroy it. Today I have made a post on my on my Facebook where I I, I made a, a comparison between the uh, the wall the Berlin Wall, which was uh, broken into. Uh, and there it says on the uh, on, on on the images on Google, it says liberty, liberty has been able to tear down the wall of Berlin. So, and today, by by contrast, 
we say that the riots in America and the divide in America has been able to bring down the wall of liberty. So the liberty was able to break to bring down the wall of Berlin. Today, the wall of liberty has been brought down by the riots, by Trumpism, by this type of supremacy and the so-called the proud uh, boys and the uh, the right but wing. Like, do, you think, do you think it's it's really look? Uh, you know, here if you talk to Muslims or the average people, sometimes you, you you average people meaning just people who are living their lives. You know, the conversation is that, well, this is about Trump and Trumpism. I mean, is it really Trumpism or is it finally the, the system because of already uh, crisis, uh, under crisis, it's now falling apart? Uh, no, it's not Trumpism. This is the, it's an accumulation. It's an accumulation of uh, fallacies, accumulation of uh, greed, if you will, accumulation of exploitation of uh, people locally and abroad. It's an accumulation of uh, the self, uh, uh, self-inclined self type of value, the individualism. This individualism, eventually it leads to this type of, uh, it's my way or the highway, it's me or none. Uh, and that doesn't work. Now, when I say that, I go back to back to the uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s, when the United States was was willing to compromise their ideas, their thoughts with the communists. When they came to the to the uh, to agreement with the Communist Party and the Soviet Union between Kennedy and Khrushchev, to say let's let let's work, let's live together, let's coexist as capitalism and socialism. But let's make deals so that we can suppress the rest of the world in order to exploit the minerals, the oil, the uh, goods in, in Asia and in Africa, and we would split them. So that's that, that time when you compromise your basic ideas of liberty and freedom and democracy uh, uh, against, or, or, or not even against, but along with the most contrasted ideology, which is socialism and communism, which is totally opposed to the capitalist and democratic, uh, democratic ideology. So that was first type of decline that's going away from the principles, which eventually is going to lead to what it, it, uh, we have seen on, on the capital building. A second uh, time where the, the, the Americans, the American mentality, Compromise the most, uh, the most uh, expensive core financially, the the, the 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 bond that can currency stable, which is really the gold system. When the United States unilaterally decided to depart from the gold system, which is a big big value that holds together all currencies of the world, so that. And inflation does not take place so that the money does not grow uh, uh, without any limit, without any restrictions, so that the, the growth of financial growth uh, remains uh, com comparable to the economic growth. They, they, they broke that. They broke it unilaterally uh, against the will of, of the whole world. The European countries, they cried blood because they knew that their currency will go will go down the drain, but the United States did not care about did not care about that exactly like what Trump is doing was doing during the last four years. So it's not something new. Is so that, that was a second. Go ahead. No, the, 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 I mean, want, uh, I, finish it. Yeah, can I finish your thought. That that was. So I'm just counting those milestones step which by have step led. By. Step by step. So we have first the compromise with the with the communist ideology, and they made this big type of deals uh, with, the, with the old Soviet Union in order to suppress the European growth and to the African Asian. Second, they broke away from the gold standard, which was the main element that could hold currencies together. Today, the world is suffering financially simply because there is no single uh, single bond 
that keeps the currencies uh, 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 glued and, uh, and stable, if you will. So they did that. Third, uh, and each one of these big so-called big presidents, they made these major, major issues. Reagan, after the, the 70s, after this big issue about the gold standard and uh, departing from it, Reagan came and said, let's depart even the banking system called the deregulation. Let's deregulate our banks so that our money can yet grow more stronger than even after we have departed from the gold standard. Because now we need to accumulate as much wealth as possible without having to grow beans or to grow corn or to, to make cars. So now we become filthy rich without having to work. So now without having to work, so let's get rid of our businesses and industry and move it around the world to China, to Brazil, to Mexico, to many other places, even to South Africa, they, they moved. Was this, was this all, the, I mean, there's, there's something very important I have to ask you, but you brought up a, a different point, which is, I mean, this was the idea of globalization, right? I mean, they pushed globalization in this way that supposedly that was, sure. what, what they will do is make the world grow, uh, yeah, you yeah. know. Eventually, th those are names. Globalization, capitalization of the world, uh, those are just names or tags to events. But the real milestones, and that's where the greed of capitalism and the and the uh, uh, the carelessness of democracy, what and this uh, self indulging in, in 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 gods of their own, although they say in God we trust, but that God that they trust is their individualism, is that self-involved, it's me, just like Trump has said, it's either me, the president, or there is no country. And that's what they have been saying for the last few decades. Uh, George Bush, now the son, he said, you either with that, uh, along our side or against us. Yeah. So you have to be mine, my slave, or you are absolutely uh, my enemy. So there is, there is a divide. There is nothing called uh, commonality, if you will, uh, accepting the others. They, uh, uh, they're so much nagged about Islam, saying that, oh, Islam, fundamentalism, they don't accept others. But they don't look at a history of about 1,400 years of Islam where the non-Muslims, the so-called minorities in their own, with, with, with the democratic terminology, have lived and survived and been absolutely very productive within the Islamic society. That, that divide never happened except within uh, capitalism. So, the, so I, I was saying Reagan made the third blow into the, into the core and the base of capitalism and democracy. Then after that came, let's say, let's jump over the Clinton time, there is a continuation of the, of the fallacies, but then comes Bush the son, and we, uh, actually it's, it was before Bush, it was during Clinton era, let, let me uh, go back, where he, uh, America issued the Patriot Law, or the mm -hmm. Law of Patriotism, and then it was enforced after 9-11. And the Patriot Law is the, the, the worst law ever, created within the, within, in, throughout the, 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 the human history. It's that law which says, you have no right, I can accuse you and I can say you are not patriotic and you are abandoning the so-called patriotism of America and you have no right to defend yourself. You can't go to the court, you cannot have a lawyer, you will just go to jail. This has never happened in the history of mankind, not even during the loot era. <laughs> even then they were famous for this type of, of uh, uh, horrendous things on laws, but not like this, not under the so-called within the scope of democracy. And then they brought 9-11 and most is likely it, they were the fabricated it. Is this the problem where, okay, so uh, the, the problem it seems like the this is the inherent problem of democracy, is that it's so fragile. 
because it's 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 based on let's say you know this patriotism nationalism individualism that whenever if this thing is if this these three concepts whatever it is if they can't be kept uh together then the society just falls apart to so do they That's have exactly. to constantly uh, call upon these ideas i mean this is like their thing you know without this the yeah. society will not survive uh, that's exactly see they have they have collected some ideas and in order to keep these ideas coherent you must have a very strong force from above in order to keep them glued together it's like the the forces the nuclear forces within an atom where it keeps the so called the the same uh, the same charged electrically like the neutrons together although they and the protons which have the, the same same positive charge it's almost impossible to keep them together combined within uh, within the, the nucleus and the moment the moment the force that keeps them together gets removed you have a nuclear explosion so that's I exactly say, what so are we saying that crisis you you the, the, in some ways i mean is it in a democratic society is capitalist societies crises are constantly needed to keep this bond not the silly crises no they they united states was very skillful at keeping these together tied by having the uh, separation between legislation between the government between the uh, jurisdiction uh, having the uh, uh, the laws if you will the laws and order trying to enforce it all the time and uh, making sure that like for example the, the the so called the founding fathers they figured out they figured out that in order to keep things running and those forces to keep the the antagonistic ideas tied together you must have freedom and liberty preferred over security you cannot use the security and to go after people as a means of stability of the society let and and in capitalism they said let the market mend itself mm-hmm. let the one who is who is poor let them dies out out of poverty the rich becomes richer don't get involved don't get involved let the market work on its own and that was a type of force that should keep the economy running the way it should whether it it's without paying attention to whoever gets benefit and who does not whether whoever dies or who does not and in in liberty they said let liberty be priority number 1 and let security comes as a result as a result of liberty those were genius ideas they, they are wrong eventually in the, in, the, in the long run in the long 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 run you can find that there are some mistakes but nevertheless that those were forces which the so called the founding fathers of america the the initial uh, uh, the, the, the the people who really made uh, america they figured out that to keep those contradictions of a society which are absolutely impossible to keep we have to make sure in fact that's what jefferson was saying if you want security to be maintained and achieved you must have liberty liberty will achieve two things freedom and and security but if you do secu- security first you will lose security and the freedom now george bush the son when he made he he enforced the patriotic law and he talked about who if you are with me or against me and he went after the people without without reason you don't have for the first time in, the, in their history there's you don't have a reason to charge me with terrorism or fundamentalism but see but uh, this, was, this was okay abu talha because you know for them this was okay so the people who were being charged were outsiders right uh foreign uh foreign uh, you know agents uh, terrorism they used no 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 no, no, no brother that's not true okay. the, the the people who were charged with with these laws many of them many of them were from the militias like uh, Mike, Michigan, uh, Michigan, yes. Mike, Mike Kevy, I forgot what's his name, the one who did the uh, federalist Obama, building in, from Obama, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, and many of the Latin Americans. They, they, in fact, they were they, uh, George Bush and his elites. They thought that the Muslims would be targeted with this law, but in reality, the ones who were hurt by by these laws are real Americans who live in America. So it's it's really it was one of the milestones that removed the the, the forces that kept the the integrity of the system, if you will. So that the, the uh, departing away from, from gold removed one of the forces. The market, let the market work, they broke that law multiple times. The, the, the last time they broke it was in the, in the crisis of 2008, 2009, when the government stepped in and took over many banks and insurance companies so that it keeps them alive. Now, that is not the natural way of sustaining a democratic capitalistic society. So, that, so those forces were removed and now the society is loose. It only took a person like Trump who is absolutely awkward and he doesn't hide his intentions to come and expose the system. But the system was really already fractured. It's not Trump who, who broke it. Trump exposed them. Yes, you so know, this is, so if you, if you look at, uh, I, I'll come back to this, but I, I really need to ask you this because I know a lot of people want me to, the, the contrast of what is happening to, what happened to USSR. I mean, you were in Russia, you lived under Soviet Union, and in many ways you, you saw the collapse. I mean, many of us did, but maybe we were younger or whatever. Yes. What do you, what, what were the, uh, uh, you know, I, I, the similarities, perhaps you know that, that you saw then, and now that you're seeing that you're seeing now with with the U.S. or the capitalism it's, in general, it's the same trend. It's the same trend. The Soviet Union started collapsing, started collapsing. The time when they departed from the ideas and the laws that kept that kept the Soviet Union coherent. The first law. That kept the, that was really putting all of these uh, contradictive ideas together and make them in a pot to make a food at the end of the day to make something working formula, if you will, was the fact that we are absolutely socialist, and this uh, the ownership is absolutely public. Uh, no individual shall own anything. It's a wrong idea, but it keeps the society coherent. I and mean, there's some basis to this. And uh, well, the, the, it's an idea. And the idea is designed to keep a socialist society socialist mm -hmm. and running. Khrushchev, uh, under the, uh, the, the pressure of greed and the, the, uh, the, the trying to, to live to coexist with capitalism, number one, just like Kennedy on the other side, he decided, okay, Capitalism is my virtual enemy, but in reality, it's my friend. America, I can make deals with America. What mm -hmm. kept the Soviet Union strong throughout the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and the beginning of the 70s, is that socialism and capitalism would not coexist. Whether I remain uh, uh, under attack or I become superior, but it will not coexist. They changed that. So that was number one. Number two, based on that, now they started what's called privatizing some of the properties and ownership against their own idea. Mm. So instead of saying everything is through the, what they call it, the, the uh, kalkhoz or the collective farms, they started doing some privatization. Now, once the privatization happens, who's going to benefit from it? The Supreme Party, the Communist Party, became now the rich class instead of being the proletariat uh, uh, party. Instead of being, they used to, to, to say the Communist Party is the, the vanguard and the protector of the proletariat. It's the party of the proletariat. Just like the Democrats, when they started their party back in uh, 17, uh, in the 18th century, they said this is the party of the, of the labor laborer or the workers or the uh, peasants, the farmers, it turned out to be, no, it's the party of the elites 
of the yeah. Iraq fillers, of the Iraq I mean, this is, uh, You know, the, the crazy thing is even today, this just this morning, a uh, few days ago, they were talking about how even before this capital thing happened, they were saying that, look, the, it seems like the Democratic actually party is turning out to be more elitist than even the Republicans. Uh, okay, on the top of that, uh, I would tell you, does it seem, you know, they, they, there's, I'm, I'm talking about the cracks uh, a little bit more. They're saying sure. that, look, uh, even Biden was worried that um, he, he, in some ways, he, he they, they were worried that well, his concern was he didn't want the House and the, you know, the, the Senate in general to be both full of Democrats because he knows himself that he's not going to be able to fulfill all the needs of the people of what he has promised. So he wanted some type of opposition in one of the branches of Congress. So it seems like the insides, insiders were concerned that, look, we're not going to be able to pro- uh, fulfill any of these things that we're at least a lot of these things that we're promising the people. So, I mean, are we looking at now uh, the Democratic Party, for instance, is all over. Everybody wants to be, you know, just because what happened two days ago. Is this is going to make the collapse even more, uh, you know, faster or is it already gone? Look, what, what I'm saying is what we are seeing is a milestone along a road of collapses. Uh-huh. The big empires big empires, big countries, they don't fall uh, in in a crash manner right away. Uh, It takes time uh, for the collapse. Uh, And that happened with the the British Empire. It happened with the Soviets, although the Soviets were the fastest probably. It happened with the Ottoman Islamic State. Mm. It took it a long time. There were lots of fractures that took place over long period of time but eventually it uh, it collapsed so the but america uh, uh, during the last probably 50 years started taking faster steps toward collapse faster because the uh, the ones who are running the show today they are preferring their own self interest over yes. the interest of the society which is which is part of individualism and capitalism, but <clears throat> for a long time, those big capitalists, they knew that we would benefit individually only if we keep America big and great. But today it's being reversed. And I remember when Lehman Brothers collapsed back in 2009, uh, they, they tried to talk to, to the Lehman Brothers uh, stakeholders Look, stay in the game, stay as a financial system in the game. We will uh, uh, remedy and repair the, 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 the economy in America, and then you will flourish one more time. And his answer was, why should I? I have my remaining $200 million. If I take them and go and live my luxury life uh, to hell with Lehman Brothers Foundation, the $200 billion, let it collapse. So that type of mentality now, it's already uh, uh, cracking down the, the, all the, the infrastructure and the backbone of, uh, of the American society. And today it has shown on the people uh, going into capital and capturing and, and looting actually, some of the stuff there uh, under the name of let's take our country back. So now the word, let's take the country back. And this was the slogan, which was uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the march in front of the White House, meaning that there is a big group of people, according to Trump, it's the 75 million who voted for him. Yeah. I mean, that's they, what he said again this morning. Right? He's saying there's 75 million people who support me. Yeah, he I said mean, those I, I, 75 million people, they want the country back. So where, where did the country go? Yeah. So to them, to them, the country, which the United States has been over uh, ruled or ruled uh, by, 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 by others, by someone who is the phantom. Uh, fortunately, for, and uh, now I would say fortunately now, it's not some Muslims uh, mm-hmm. who are there. <laughs> that, was but, the, uh, <laughs> that was the concern. <laughs> I and mean, the media was going crazy. Look, they were saying, yeah. imagine fortunately if there was a bunch of Muslims, what would happen? 
<laughs> yeah, because if, if it was Muslims run, t- taking it over, then America would be much, much better, better place for people to live in. But uh, uh, the uh, truth of the matter is that this is how democracy and capitalism would uh, end up doing. Some people are going to grow rich, whether you like it or not, because they, are, they can do some business. Some people are going to gain some power, whether you like it or not, because people can get elected through the electoral uh, vote. And eventually, eventually, those who have a vision of what America is, America is the West with the gold in it. That's uh, guys, young men go West. There is lots of money there. Young men come back to come to America. There is lots of money. There is the, the land of dream and opportunity, etc. So once this happens now, everybody is going to, to get part of the dream. And at some point, those who thought that this is my country, I am the wasp, I am the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, I'm the one who should be making the rules and legislations, but it, it, it's not going to work like that forever. So you either have to change from within, you have to change your ideas that it's not the wasp uh, uh, country anymore, it's the white Anglo-Saxon Catholic as well as Protestant, and it's colored, colored uh, immigrant, non-Anglo-Saxon they, who are there also, whether you like it or not. Now, if you cannot change the ideas or remove those divides, then those who's going to glue everybody together. So that's the, the essence really, uh, 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 which I would like to say is that America, the ideas of capitalism and democracy to put them together, those so-called the freedom of speech and the freedom of ownership those are antagonistic. Those they'll go go against each other. In order to make them within the same room, same uh, house, same society, you have to have a big force, what are you said, logical force, to freedom, to, to get them together. You said freedom but, of speech and freedom of uh, ownership. They go against each other. Can you give me an example of this? Example example is you are free to speak and to make laws and to dream. But then if you don't have enough money as much as I do, I would be able to subjugate your freedom to mine. Exactly, this is what the, the so-called the lobbyist groups who are big big tanks or I mean, big- uh, is, this, is, this, is this what's going on even between whites and blacks, Abu Talha? I mean, can you say, is this one of the things where you have, blacks are being told you have freedom of speech, go ahead, you can talk, you have the Malcolm X's and Martin Luther King's, but at the end of the day, they, they can't own anything. They, they, is this what no. you're talking about here it, also? It's, it's with the blacks and within between the whites. Even today, in all over the world, not only in America, uh, in order, for you to vote to someone, some to cast your vote freely with liberty, you should know who is running and what are their programs. So the one who has access to the media, he would reach you more than the other guy. And the one who can spend money, like in, in many places in the world, they, they buy votes. In America, they buy votes. Georgia itself, they spent uh, one billion dollars just in Georgia because yeah, buying has, votes, literally. one billion. And uh, so, and then you had, uh, you know, uh, Biden was saying uh, the next, the night before the the, the final uh, tallies, whatever it is, he was saying that look, whoever supports me will get two thousand uh, dollars check uh, rather than the six hundred dollars. And th- this was back and forth going on. But uh, Abu Talha, do you think also that people are seeing that look on? Uh, you know, elections and Allah knows what, they're spending a billion dollars while people in general, they don't have beds in the hospitals. They don't know uh, that people are not getting vaccinated. Uh, there's so many people discussing that, look, I'm not 65 years old, whatever, but at the same time, I, I don't have access to what some of these people have access to, you know, they're billionaires. I mean, is the white, when we're talking about the white and black, what I'm asking you basically is that, is this really about white or black or is it that have and have nots are going at it. It's all types of divides. The divide is based on color, divide based on gender. Women 
are uh, very much oppressed in the in the United States. Uh, I'm not saying in other places in the world they are not, but in other places of the world, women are oppressed as a reflection of the power and the hegemony of the United States over other nations. So similarly, racism, black and white, uh, uh, and and poor and rich. So all of these values or 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 in values, if you will, uh, uh, they have been propagated and supported and, and moved by this tyrant big power. And today it's, it's, it's hitting back. So they use the, all of these so, the, 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 the stupid ideas. They bombarded the whole world with them. And the whole world is really in, in deep, 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 deep uh, 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 trouble because of that. But it's, a, but it's a deep trauma. Everybody's in trauma. Not sure what to do. Everybody's in trauma, but that did not keep America safe. It was bound for these things to hit back, to hit back home. You, you cannot use these, the divides between nations forever without hitting your own nation. Why would you be secure? What is it? What type of magic that keeps you immune from the from the bombardment that you do uh, you, you you make against Afghanistan against Iraq against Syria against Africa against uh, uh, Korea against other places you have done miserable things all over the world but the same things that you have used are chasing you and today what we have seen a few a couple of days ago that's exactly by Biden today was said among the 100 countries I have visited, I have seen in those places where dictatorship and tyranny, where what we have seen today at Capitol Hill, but yeah. he he could not complete the whole truth because the whole truth is what you have seen outside in Iran or in Iraq or in Syria is exactly your work, the work of your democracy, the work of your tyranny, the work of your imperialism, the work, the work of your globalization had created those dictatorships that had allowed the people to be so desperate to bring someone like Gaddafi and stick something in his butt when, 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 they, when, when they got him and to throw Mubarak out of office because of what you have created, you have created zombies that only people can revolt at any point of time and remove them. But that's exactly what you have done from Libya and Tunis and others. Today's chasing you in DC. It's not out of the blue. It's environment you created. You cannot have a nuclear weapon thrown with big atomic bombs somewhere and you stay immune from the radiation. It's going to come back to you, whether you like it or not. Let me ask you this, though, Abutara. You know, the thing is, even when, let's say, uh, you know, what are the competing ideas, though? I mean, what is right now competing? Uh, let's say, yes, we're talking about a collapse. You're seeing that there is a step-by-step. -step. I mean, obviously, it's not going to happen in, in, in two days. But what what are the competing ideas? I mean. Is it Islam that they're worried about? Is it communism that they're worried about? What, what are they worried about that people might be looking elsewhere now? They're, they're, America is not it. I mean, how, how do we resolve this issue? Uh, Brzezinski, in his uh, famous book, uh, which he wrote called about the uh, leadership and economy, America needs uh, new leadership. He clearly states, the only reason that America continues to practice its uh, dominance and hegemony in the world is because there is no ideology that could unify the foes that could make America look small or even collapse. Now, I'm pretty sure that Brzezinski knows better. He knows better. There is an ideology that could bind and group people, nations, many nations together so that they can provide a model which is way different than capitalism that has, that's collapsing and democracy that's not working, uh, which is Islam. He knows that. Putin knows that. 
uh, Dick Cheney and Rumsfeld, when during Bush, they knew that. And they knew that even the name of it. They said it's it's the Khilafah, the, 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 the Caliphate, Caliphate yeah. system. That's what, uh, which we call the Khilafah. Uh, they know that. But what keeps them a little bit uh, in a comfort zone is that Islam and the Khilafah for the last hundred years had not been able to come back to the world arena in a form of a, a system or a model or a state that can propagate and represent Islam. And they continue to hope that that Islam would remain behind the walls. But nevertheless, without Islam being on, uh, on site, they continue the, to have a free, if you will, a free fall a free fall without a potential replacement. Now, communism and socialism are no longer able to replace or even to compete or even to present anything new. It's over. With socialism and, and communism, it's over. The idea is cracked, the idea failed, not the Soviet Union failed, the idea failed. And because the idea failed, Soviet Union collapsed. Similarly today, it's not because America fails. America is powerful. It's very powerful nuclear power. Economically, it's the most powerful nation in the world. It has uh, the uh, research centers, universities, institutes. Uh, it's very powerful. But what, what is really breaking the backbone of this powerful system is the idea. Exactly like what, what the just One second. I'm talking, so here's the thing. Just, just, just. Uh, I want to just go a little bit further in that. You know, a lot of people they look at infrastructure and they look at these same things, universities and all of this, and they say, "Hey, man, you guys keep talking about collapse, but look, everything is running. Streets are good, bridges are, oh, although bridges are collapsing. You know, infrastructure is is there. So when you when we talk about a collapse, we're talking about an idea has to fall. Infrastructure may look fine and dandy, but it's the idea." that can exactly. no longer even hold on to the infrastructure. That's the definition of collapse. That's the definition of collapse. That's why when I started talking, I said, look, there are ideas that America has uh, used to keep America strong. What made America a big, powerful country are the ideas. It didn't come because the people were so nice Actually, the people that, that built America were the, the worst types of people you could ever think of. Those were the people who ran out of the jails from Europe. Yeah. They threw them out to the U.S., so the, to the new, new found land. So they either die, get killed, or they survive away from the, 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 the gentle men of Europe. So these were the worst type of people you could ever even think of. So it's not the, the fact that they, 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 they were absolutely giant, uh, strong, uh, genius people, but it was ideas that were put together and they were glued somehow with big forces that kept them working that made America what America is now. And today, administration after administration the, the deep state behind them, the contradiction between the interest of individuals. Can, can you define deep state? I mean, I, I'm seeing this a lot, a lot of, you know, this terminology, deep state, deep state. What does this mean? Deep state means the actual actors behind the... the, the, the any deep, state, the, 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 deep, deep state, deep state means that there is a group of people that happen to benefit the most out of the system once the system was created. Mm. and happened to have to, according to uh, uh, Adam Smith, that in the race for scarce resources, some of us are going to grab more resources than the other faster. That's the nature of capitalism. And those who grab resources faster and larger in quantity and faster in time are going to become elites by default. Mm. 
And throughout the process, those so elites who have been able to grab more and faster, they have been able to set up laws and regulations and impact the uh, constitution, amendments, elections, uh, who can rule, who cannot rule. So they have been able to be in a position where they can influence and impact the course of history of the nation. This is called a deep state now. Now they, they don't have interest in, in running the show themselves, but they want the show to run according to their will. Mm. Now, who are they? We can sit down and count and find those as examples of them. Just uh, uh, think of the ones of the families that were able to grab the oil resources first and the gold mines of the West first. The Rockefellers and the etc. The Rockefellers, the Melons, the Carnegies, the uh, Chase, uh, Golden, uh, go, the Sachs, the uh, uh, who else? And there are many other names which, but right. they're not not many. Right. So in, in total, in total there are few, and then those. Once they saw that the stakes are big, then they formed their institutes and their schools and their think tanks, and they paid money, they keep paying them money to tell them what is the best course to take so that we maintain power and force. That's a deep state. So, so now those, the deep state was so careful, careful to, to sustain certain ideas and thoughts so that it can keep the society coherent. But they, 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 they could not do that forever because at some point their own interest will collide with what they have established at the beginning. That's what I said, then they eat their God. <laughs> when they build a God and when they think that, okay, this God has been, uh, we have built this God out of gold but I need the gold. So sell the God and get the gold. So that's where the contradiction comes in. And the, the, But emphasizing the, the issue, what makes big countries collapse, it's not a war. It's mm -hmm. not a foul. In fact, wars and enemies make them stronger. That's mm -hmm. why the United States has always loaned for an enemy to fight or to challenge, because that so, enemy. So in the beginning, when we were talking a little bit, you know, we were saying, okay, sometimes I guess they kind of need crisis to kind of keep those things together. And that also makes them stronger. I mean, they needed those crises. Uh, but this is a whole different type of crisis. In this case, I think I think. if the crisis is from, is, is within, is a crisis is internal, it's devastating. Uh -huh. So that's the crisis, the, so there's also a difference there. There's an internal crisis and there's external. Yes. External you need that keeps you together. Internal exactly. you collapse. Internal, you just a, just a, one more question, uh, Butalha, before I go on, because I want to take questions now uh, because of time also. But just, I know the question is probably big, but as, as, as short as you can. I mean, how, and how does an idea fail? Uh, is it a counter idea or let's say if there is no counter to that, uh, that idea, can an idea fail anyhow? Just like, uh, I mean, I can say for communism, for instance, there was capitalism, uh, for whatever the case may be, can, but can an idea fail, collapse by itself? Yes, it can, it can, because uh, 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 if ideas are made by men, okay, mm -hmm. ideas made by men, based on the best of their knowledge, Assuming the genuity, they are so genuine and genius. But nevertheless, these ideas have scope in time. Because as an individual, as a man, I would not be able to foresee. I can foresee for one year, two years, five years, ten years. But once you talk about decades, it becomes almost impossible. You can't do that. So ideas, if they are not absolutely supreme, based on the absolute knowledge, which does not exist in the world, in the world of man. This has to be 
a God-made idea. But if it's a man-made idea, then eventually this idea is going to run into contradictions ah. with other ideas. That's in because because in of limitation. America. Huh? Limitation. I mean, just because... Limited it, in time. There is a scope. That's why when, when, uh, uh, when the earlier founders of America, they thought about these two contradicting ideas. Liberty, liberty and security. And there was a big debate on this. These are two competing ideas. Which one should should be which one should be the the vanguard and the protector of the other? We are going. There's a break. Which one comes first? At the time of Marx, they made the. Now, can yeah, I hear me? No, no, no. Go ahead. Just go back to one more. Th the thought. Yeah, I can hear you. Just okay. go back a little bit. You're talking about okay. how. Okay. So the, the 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 contradiction between ideas. The the founding fathers they they put two the question in front of them: liberty and security. The human needs freedom and needs security. So they agreed on this. They said this is fine. But what comes first? Mm. Which one I could sacrifice and which one I would sacrifice myself to keep it? Mm. Now, naturally, many people that said security should be first because security protects me. But then they argued back, no, 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 no. You have to be free in order to appreciate security. If you are not free, you would even hate security because you don't like it. So they kept arguing back and forth until Jefferson, he said, no, if you do security, you lose both security and freedom. If you do freedom, you gain both. And he managed to put the first amendment to be freedom, not security. Okay. The Soviets, the communists, they argued which comes first. The idea, the thought, or the matter, the spiritual, intellectual part of the body, or the material part of the body and the, and, and the universe, and they kept arguing on this until Marx came with the with the with the idea. No, no, no. Materialistic matter comes first because the the, the mind, the intellect, is nothing but a product of the matter. Mm. So he used this philosophy. But eventually, eventually, the, the, these two issues had always been in collision. In collision, which one you want really to, to sustain over the other? So that's what I said. Keeping these two items, two ideas in the same box, you must have, a, for America, you must have an external enemy. And you must have the so-called the deep state and the intellectuals and 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 they must keep this in mind all the time, no matter what. But comes the time when you don't have the same genius on the same ideas and it's not working. So comes someone like Bush, the son, and then Trump, and then all of these, and even Obama, where they say, security, security, security. We must protect our land, we must protect our people, we must protect our money, our wealth, and then you can be free. Mm. You are dead then. That's a collapse. That's what made you, and people don't understand that. People think that America had been born a very powerful nation, and it had established those laws and regulations and ideas and thoughts. That's not true. America came as a result, as a result of thinking about their philosophy years and years and decades. They fought wars, the civil war, in order to establish what direction we should go to. But then these directions today, when, when Trump talks about immigrants as if he's talking about thugs, when you look at the people who are looking for their 
Black Black Lives Matter, BLM. So these are thugs, looters. He never looked at them as humans who need freedom. He said, first, go and find yourself a food, a work, something, and then come and ask for your liberty and the freedom. That's BS. That's not correct. That is going against your own God. The walls are built upon concepts of gods, whether your God is Allah or your God is the cow as in India. I think we are losing seconds. It's your time. <laughs> it's your time. I think it's, we are losing it on your side. We're on the line. It's his side. Because you're still moving. I'm still getting signal. Uh, Abu Tala, I think we're losing you a little bit. Which means a very holy thing. Forward. But then, that's what I want. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I can see the... Hold on. Uh, okay. Now, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Is it any better? It's better. It's good. It's good now. It's okay. Good. I I, let I me change. let me let me go to because we lost a little bit time there. But let's let me ask you some questions that are coming in. Uh, I I just want before you do that before you do that, I just want people to understand one thing that when you make your idea and that idea becomes your god, whether it's Allah to Muslims, whether it's uh, materialism to communist or democracy to, to uh, and the freedom, liberty to capitalist. Once this God and it remains a God for you, you will move forward at full speed. But once you go against your God, just like America did for the capital, they eventually went against their God. They killed the God. They killed it. Just like the Muslims, when we went against our God, Allah Azza wa Jal, we no longer take him as, as sacred, we lost. And that's, whether you like it or not, this is what's going to happen to the people. America falls from within because it's, it has gone against their own God. It's irreversible. Go ahead. So here, uh, uh, just to uh, I get so when you talk about you know, the Muslims here, you're saying, I mean, any ideology has its own. It has its aqida. Let's say it has its uh, you know core, and the moment you 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 go against that main core idea, you're done. The idea, the, any that's how ideas fail. That's it. Yes. You're now questioning uh, who you are. Finished. Once you do that, then you're done. Uh, the question was here. Uh, if you can move, I can't see the question. If you can move the, the, the big one. Yeah. Because yeah. Now I got. Uh, it says here. Do you see the goals of bridging the gap within our ummah becoming more expeditious, yani faster, due to the events that transpired in Washington yesterday? I mean, what do you? Uh, I guess what you're thinking, uh, being in the Muslim world. By the way, what uh, being in Jordan? Uh, what was the? What were the Muslims thinking when this happened? You know, what were your conversations like being in the heart of the Ummah? Well, the, uh, I remember, I remember a word. Uh, uh, somebody once asked uh, one of the Palestinian brothers from Palestine on what his thought were about some events that took place in the United States, one of the, of the issues. He said, I no longer, I don't have more tears in my eyes to shed for any other problems. All my tears have been consumed for my, uh, for my people. So today, when the, 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 the Muslims in my country here in Jordan and in other places, and I interact with people all, all over the world through the Facebook, I don't see anyone 
who is looking with uh, pettiness, who is, who is, uh, whose heart goes yeah. for America, oh, may God uh, bless yeah. America. They say, oh, that's exactly what they should, they yeah. should think is part of what they have done to us. To the people. Yeah. So that's, yeah. uh, the, I mean, uh, the, the Brazilian newspaper, I don't know if you, <laughs> I'll send it to you. Uh, the, the front page of the Brazilian newspaper was uh, Barbarians Are Back. It no, was I, unbelievable. It's, it's uh, it, today, I think even Biden mentioned that. He said the nomads, he used the word nomads. Uh, that, but see, uh, uh, Brother Muhammad, the point here is uh, nations, uh, powers, empires uh, usually get constructed and built and uh, uh, glued together and, and uh, uh, stitched together based on ideas and thoughts. Whether the ideas and thoughts are correct inherently or not. But as long as there are, uh, and an idea becomes sacred, and once it becomes sacred, it becomes like a ritual. It becomes like a godly thing. Now, the word God does not mean the creator. God means the one that you, you take as a sacred one. And this was the case. Like, people were in shock that, that you know, it, it was, a sh people were, it, you know, they could expect anywhere else in the country, but, you know, Washington, the capital of the country, the, the, the building that, that just, uh, you know, it, uh, and there is there is unanimous agreement that the attack was on democracy and democracy is the God. And it's my American. <laughs> my American, that this was attack on democracy. And then now they say, no, we protected our democracy. You did not. It's, somebody made the big assault publicly on TVs. Yeah. Uh, that's and that is not something light. That's something something you cannot remedy uh, using Biden or one or two or three presidencies. You cannot do that. It's it's over. The point here, it is over. And that is, uh, uh, people should understand that uh, the uh, once you really go against your own God, you are dead. You are dead doesn't have to be in the hereafter. It's in this life. Yeah, and we, the Muslim... The backbone is gone. The Muslims, we know this better than anyone else mm. because our God is real. Allah Azza wa is real. It's not, it's not fake. And the idea in believing in Allah kept us going for about 1,300 years. Yeah. Ups and downs. But it is so powerful. But the moment you start going away from that, you are going to collapse, whether you like it or not. Is and it uh, another? Is you know uh, this discussion? You said, look, uh, I mean, the core is being hit. The uh, ideological. It's not even ideological. Ideological divide. Rather, it's more of an ideological collapse. But uh, do you see now? Is there so you know uh, ideologically we? So what are we going to see in the country now? What do you, uh, you know, what are your analysis as far as what's going yeah. to happen in the next yeah. 10, decades, 10 years? Yeah, the uh, next 10 years or starting from now, from today, you will start seeing more conflicts and mistrust. See, number one, the mistrust or the lack of confidence. That's already there. More people will start losing confidence in many other issues. Today it's the Congress, tomorrow it's the uh, legislation, tomorrow it's the justice system, the day after in the banking system, the day after in the food they eat. And in fact, uh, the, the, the trust in the vaccine, which is yeah, the, the people have never lost the trust or lack trust in medicine. Today, today they are the idea of what is it I am being fed, not eating? You are no longer say what um, I am eating. So what they, what are they feeding me? <laughs> and that's that's uh, that's a reverse uh, question. What are they vaccinating me in? For the first time in history, they make a survey. 
whether you want to take the vaccine or not. So, and that is, that's part of killing the trust and the confidence. And once you lose confidence in your, in your own life, just like you losing your confidence with your own boss, with your- Where, where, where do we go from here, Abu Talha, as Muslims? Because, you know, uh, Muslims are also looking for security. Uh, human beings in general are looking for security here. Everywhere, not just here, everywhere. I'm just, and so what are we supposed to do now? Where, where, where do we find security? Where do we find some type of release? Uh, relief? Uh, okay, that's the same question. When Americans, they asked, how do we attain security? You attain security if you have good ideas. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, he talks about al-amn, about al-ladhina amanu, al-ladhina amanu, those who have the iman and those are the ones who get the security security of security of food security of health security of uh, physical security is a result it's a result it's not a cause it's a result and the cause is the mental ideas that you believe in so the muslims today they must understand they will never be able to be secure, not in America, not in Jordan, not in Egypt, not in any place, just like other people. They will not be secure uh, health-wise, food-wise, uh, life-wise, confidence-wise, absolutely no security, except, except you must stick to an idea that works and you must make this idea, you must bring it to a society and you must build a society upon an idea a supreme idea, a good idea, a strong idea, like the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, then, then you will achieve security and, and uh, 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 tranquility. Otherwise, forget it. You will not get it uh, in Jordan or in Egypt or in Turkey or in America or in UK. Nowhere. Nowhere. And that's, uh, uh, in fact, what Ibrahim alayhi salam, when they threatened him uh, about the, with the fire, he asked him the question, Man bil-amn? Who is more secure? Me or you? They were trying to throw him in a fire and he's challenging them. He's more secure than his uh, uh, persecutors. And that's exactly what we have to come back to. Muslims today, they have responsibility and opportunity. The opportunity is that today the world is wide open for new ideas and you are the only one who has a good idea. And the responsibility is because each and every one in the world is looking for a way out, for a solution. And Allah Azza wa Jal clearly, he said, Alif Lamra in Surah Ibrahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lamra, Kitabun unzila ilayk, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayk, litukhrij al-nasa min al-zulumati ila al-nur. We have given you a book so that you deliver the people out of the darkness they are, they are in. It's a responsibility. And it's an opportunity. Opportunity because the, the, the biggest God, Hubal Allat al Uzza, is going down. Falling apart. It's being punished. So today, bring your God up. Bring your ideas about God up because it's your time. It's an opportunity. No, that, that's very true. I mean, I, I was actually surprised that uh, even, you know, I, I gave a khutbah in Huda today, uh, another masjid, and even the sheikh before me, which is rare to hear, I mean, that uh, uh, that this is the time, even uh, coming from mashayikh maybe that don't usually speak on these matters, for even mashayikh like this to come and say that, look, uh, what we are observing is plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wake the Muslims up and uh, to realize that we are the only ones that uh, can bring some type of peace. So we are the only ones that, that, that have something to offer. So I think, so by, by saying that, do you think, I mean, the idea of the Khilafah or the idea that, uh, you know, what are, we, what are we saying? You know, if somebody asked a question regarding the same thing we were just talking about, is unification within our Ummah possible within this decade? Um, is this possible because what we are seeing happening, uh, you know, that the, no, no one believes the ideas are falling, the democracy is falling apart. Obviously, communism is gone. Uh, what, is, this, is this more acceptable now? The idea that there has to be another idea. 
and, and to, to count there, just so you can add it to it. Sure. Look, Abu what happens if people, let's say the Muslims don't look for, you know, they, they don't bring the idea of the Khilafah. Is an idea, you know, just like how communism uh, came out of somewhere, just because they were tired of capitalism, is another idea also possible? Look, ideas, especially ideologies, ideological ideas are not, easy to come by, they don't fall from the heavens, from the sky. They don't, the sky does not rain ideas, especially I'm talking about fundamental ideas. It took for communism more than 70 years to be formulated. Capitalism and democracy took more than 150 years to formulate. Islam or the ideas of uh, religions usually takes a lifespan of a prophet a whole lifespan, and this is something coming from Allah Azza wa from God, ready. It doesn't have to be, uh, to be uh, constructed, and it takes time. So today for a new idea to emerge uh, from the, all the policies and the problems, it's, it's, it's impossible. It's a, that's why today there is an opportunity for the idea of Islam to come in and prove itself, but the idea cannot prove itself simply because I claim it's a good idea. As I said, all ideas are good. Good means valid, I'm sorry. All ideas, even democracy, freedom, liberty, uh, capitalism, uh, communism, socialism, these are valid ideas. So each and every idea that is capable of producing laws and systems and, and, and become and creating societies are valid ones. Now, some of those valid ones are absolutely correct, like the ones which are based on the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, like Islam. So we have an idea, it's there. It can construct a society because it did it before and it has mental proof and strength and it has people who follow. It has about 2 billion people who believe in it. So all the ingredients and the pillars needed to establish something upon this idea are there. It takes now courage and guts and dedication by, by brothers and sisters to really come together strongly, use the current opportunity where there is a vacuum today. As we speak, there is a vacuum. As an ideological vacuum. I'm not talking about military vacuum or nu I'm not nuclear arsenal. All of these are based on what ideas keep them. I'm talking about ideological vacuum today. And the only ones who have an idea that qualifies to be an ideology is Islam. And there is the opportunity is wide open and as I said, it's not only opportunity, it's a responsibility because being a Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jal wants me to bring this Islam to the world. And I think to bring, uh, no, no, world, no. To bring it to the world, I just want to mention, we have to, to be very clear. To bring it to the world does not mean I may I have a website and I talk about Islam and a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. To bring it to the world means you must build a society with Islam. Yeah. You must bring it into a society. You must construct a state, a political state, economic state, social. Uh, it has all the components of a state and the system and come up as a model. Otherwise, otherwise the idea does not exist physically. It may exist in my mind and your mind, in the prophet's mind, but physically it becomes a valid idea to make a renaissance and to make, to deliver people out of darkness. The only way this can happen is if this idea is used to build a state and a society and show the implications of this idea. The justice, the fairness, the distribution of wealth, the distribution of responsibilities, the breaking of all divides, that the world that America and and its uh, uh, ideology had created, how they are removed. 
So that's what I, I, I want to say. I don't want to come out from here, people saying, oh, just that means let's go and give da'wah to Americans and tell them about Islam. Okay, God bless you. That's good. But that doesn't work. You, you, this is uh, so the Muslims here, what should they be doing? I mean, you're saying it's not just giving da'wah, but with a, you're saying we, we need to, uh, as you know, some people say, I say, well, no, we need to give da'wah and all of these things. A lot of the people are now all of a sudden saying that, oh, look, you know, there's a huge divide. People are looking for solutions. We need to bring Islam. So you're saying Islam, we're not talking about Islam of just Salah, Siyam, Qiyam. We're talking about, you're saying, we need to present Islam as ideolo ideological Islam. Yes. Yes, you need to present it as ideological. Now, physically, how much you can contribute to that, that's a different story. Uh, Jafar bin Abi Talib, when he went to Abyssinia, he kept the idea of Islam in his brain and within his companions that this is a supreme idea that can make uh, a good uh, societal creation and all types of relations, but he could not contribute to the building of the state in Medina or in Mecca. But nevertheless, so when he saw the state coming up in Medina, he returned and he became a leader of, his, uh, of the Islamic army. Yeah. So, the, So the idea is, I could be in Iceland, I could be in Australia, in New Zealand, in uh, Argentina, in Chile, wherever, or in Jordan. And when I present my idea of Islam from my brain, my mind to the people around me, whether Muslim or, or non-Muslims, I would say, look, for this Islam to work, I would say, them, yeah, I want you to become a Muslim, but don't understand me wrong. This Islam will not change the stones into gold and will not remove poverty and will not remove the differences between black and white simply because it's a good Islam. It can do it only if it becomes part of a society. If the society is built on this idea, then we can do it. So just to, uh, because we only have about three minutes left, uh, just wanted to summarize a little bit. Uh, you know, you said something that when we, the future of America, it's at this point very unsecure. I mean, is this a valid point now to say that, look, it doesn't look like it's gonna get any better. Uh, things are gonna get, I mean, divides are going to continue into more divides and more divides until uh, until what happens, Abu Talha, unless, uh, unless an, uh, another ideological state comes together or uh, until what, what happens here? I mean, what are we looking at, just misery? I mean, a miserable condition continues. Just that's it. No, no. It's uh, it will be it will be more than that. See, as I said, uh, the moment you go against your the ideas that made you strong, then you will become weak. That's natural. That's the the just reverse the reverse the idea. So, the uh, America, uh, it's weakening its own structure by itself, uh, uh, as you were alluding to, uh, we, uh, uh, the fact that would there be another country that would take advantage of that? Today, Pelosi was mentioned, talking about it. Would China maybe, or? Russia or China, no. Uh, it's because they have already gone through the same, the same uh, poison before them. So it's not, there is no country that's willing to come and push America off the cliff. No one. So the uh, next few years, it's going to be more calamities that will be happening of different brands, different tastes, different things. But uh, uh, as a, a great empire, it started going down. It started going down. I don't think personally that anyone can put brakes to it. Brakes are no longer there. So for, for Muslims, to tell you the truth, you know, we always see in everything there is uh, there is khair. So even in the words that you are saying, I will take it the right way that uh, there is now uh, hope. It's an opportunity. For, 
Yeah, not only opportunity, but I think finally the Muslims are also seeing that, uh, you know, that, um, we in many ways, we looked at the world and it was always them. It was over there uh, and it was never here. So now uh, insecurity, uh, financial issues, economic collapse, uh, job losses, uh, terrorism, domestic terrorism, everything that was part of uh, third world, so-called third world that was created by the West uh, is now here and it's now here to stay. Uh, but uh, Abu Talha, wallah, jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Inshallah, we will be having more of these conversations, uh, um, you know, as the divides continue. <laughs> because until uh, an actual uh, something, you know, comes uh, on, you know, on, 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 on the stage, inshallah. But uh, Allah jazakallah khair for your time. Uh, and I'm actually looking forward to another conversation on the thinking on the book, because I think it's needed the most at this point, inshallah. Okay. So uh, we'll be in contact again. Jazakallah khair. Uh, yani be safe, be in Allah Ta'ala, and keep us in your du'a. Inshallah. Brothers and inshallah. sisters, inshallah, this is one of the many talks in uh, in uh, in the masjid talk. Inshallah, we will continue from different scholars, different teachers. I know, I think there is maybe uh, Sheikh Asim might be coming up talking about on the, on, on the fiqh that we need to learn, inshallah. So we will continue uh, with Sheikh Asim uh, as we can, uh, as we uh, go on with, with the masjid talks. Brothers and sisters, please uh, follow masjid talks. Uh, follow, there's there's tafsir classes that take place here, there's fiqh classes that take place here, uh, there is sira classes that are, that are being given here, and we will also continue to have different discussions uh, that are so badly needed, especially in the time that we are living in. Uh, so, uh, yani keep in touch with us, and uh, follow the talk, bismillah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.